Nothing represents cinematic storytelling in video games better than The Last of Us. Joel and Ellie's powerful journey through post-apocalyptic America resonated with all of us. So, with The Last of Us Part 2 on the horizon, let's catch up Naughty Dog's classic story with the complete Last of Us timeline. Okay, so real quick, I'm sure you've heard about all the drama around Naughty Dog and the leaked spoilers for Last of Us Part 2. Just so you know, we're not getting into any of that. Think of this video as a primer to get you ready for Part 2. We're not gonna spoil it for you. All right, with that out of the way, let's begin. 2013. Joel owns a quaint house in Austin, Texas. When he gets home from a rough day at work, he finds his only daughter, Sarah, asleep on the living room couch. He wakes her up and tells her to go to bed, but she refuses because she doesn't want to miss this day. With 10 minutes left before midnight, she pulls out a present from beneath the couch, wishing her dad a happy birthday. He opens it to find a nice watch, and they playfully banter about how she got money for it. The two eventually fall asleep, with Joel carrying her to her room. Sarah suddenly wakes up to a panicked phone call from her uncle Tommy. She goes downstairs to find Joel, also in a state of panic. At that point, their neighbor, now in an aggressive animalistic state, breaks into their house and lunges towards them. Joel shoots him, and he and Sarah flee their house. They meet up with Tommy, and the three start driving. When they reach town, they get into a car crash and have to escape on foot. Joel takes Sarah in his arms, and starts fleeing until an armed soldier stops them. The soldiers are there to contain the outbreak, so even though the soldier pleads with his superior not to, he has to treat Joel and his daughter as possible risks. He opens fire on Joel and Sarah still in his arms, so Joel loses his footing and the two tumble down a hill. The soldier follows up to put an end to Joel, but just before he can, Tommy kills the soldier. Unfortunately, it's a tragic case of too little, too late. Joel only has some minor scrapes and bruises, but Sarah has been shot. Joel pleads for his daughter's life, begging her to stay with him as she cries from the pain. Unfortunately, she passes away in his arms. 2033. 20 years later, a zombie-like pandemic has spread far and wide, destroying American society as we know it. It all started with a fungal infection from the parasitic cordyceps fungus. This fungus takes over human bodies within days, starting with the brain. The victim loses all sense of humanity and resorts to basic instincts, looking to bite anybody nearby. The longer the infection lasts, the more these people develop into clickers, feral, deformed, blind monsters that are really hard to kill. Ellie, a 13-year-old girl, has found herself a new home in the quarantine zone of Boston. She lives in a boarding school and has trouble making friends because she doesn't trust many people. It's a zombie outbreak. I mean, can you blame her? Eventually, she gets along with an older girl named Riley, who always finds trouble. They always sneak out of school together, visiting a nearby mall, and their friend Winston. He's an old survivor, but he takes the time to teach Ellie how to ride a horse. During their travels, Ellie and Riley run into the Fireflies, a paramilitary group that's trying to bring order to the world. Their leader, Marlene, actually knew Ellie's mother, and she gives the young girl a letter from her mom along with her mother's switchblade. Ellie holds the two items close to her heart, especially the switchblade. Weeks after meeting the Fireflies, things between Ellie and Riley grow tense. Riley disappears, and Ellie gets drafted into the military so she can learn to kill Fireflies. Then, out of nowhere, Riley wakes Ellie up to deliver some interesting news. She just joined the Fireflies. Ellie's pissed that Riley disappeared for so long, so she demands some answers. Riley says she'll tell her story if the two get out of the boarding school. When they get to the abandoned mall that Winston called home, they talk about how he seemingly died of a heart attack recently. Nonetheless, the two enjoy their time playing around in a Halloween store and cracking jokes while on a carousel. After playing in the arcade, Riley reveals that this will be her last day with Ellie. Tomorrow, she moves to a new city on a Firefly assignment. Old feelings resurface, and the two get into an argument. Ellie has been mad at Riley for disappearing without a warning, while Riley feels like Ellie doesn't listen to her. The two let off some steam in a water gun fight with each other, and Ellie finally apologizes. She doesn't want Riley to go, but she wishes her well on her assignment. Riley connects Ellie's Walkman to a sound system, and the two dance in the mall. As they dance, Ellie realizes her true feelings for Riley and begs her not to leave. Riley rips off her dog tag, and the two share a kiss. They promise to figure things out together. Just at that moment, though, some runners break into the mall, and they fight for their lives. After fighting off the runners, the two find a moment to relax, only to discover they've both been bitten. Riley lays out two options, using the gun to take the easy way out, or to keep fighting and be all poetic and lose their minds together. Ellie asks if there's a third option. Three weeks later. Meanwhile, Joel has been living a pretty rough life. He ended up becoming a smuggler in the quarantine zone of Boston, or whatever's left of that. He works closely with a woman named Tess, and together, they survive by doing some under-the-table dealings in and around Boston. Together, Tess and Joel are looking for an arms dealer named Robert, who stole some of their weapons. But once they find him, they learn that he sold those weapons to the Fireflies. So Tess shoots him dead. She's determined to get those weapons back, and by sheer coincidence, Marlene arrives on the scene. Marlene offers to return their weapons if they can smuggle something out of the city. Ellie. Joel isn't exactly fond of transporting living cargo, especially 
rude kids like Ellie. Nonetheless, he obliges. Tess follows Marlene to ensure she can hold up her end of the bargain, while Joel escorts Ellie to a safe house. Tess joins the two after she makes sure everything is square with Marlene. They start their journey outside of Boston, but they quickly get stopped by soldiers who check to see if they're infected. Joel and Tess test negative, but before Ellie's test processes, she lashes out and attacks the soldiers. Joel and Tess back her up, killing them. After the scuffle, Tess looks at the scanner, which reveals that Ellie tested positive. The young girl swears that she was bitten three weeks ago, despite the fact that most people start turning within days. For all intents and purposes, it seems like Ellie is immune to the fungus. Marlene believes Ellie might be the key to finding some sort of vaccine, so Tess and Joel continue to escort her to the Capitol building. After Tess convinces Joel, it's worth a shot. When they reach the Capitol, though, all they find are massacred fireflies. Joel wasn't on board with this mission from the beginning, so he figures that's it, mission failed. However, Tess reveals that she was bitten an hour ago, and her wound already looks worse than Ellie's. She doesn't have much time, and she urges Joel to bring Ellie to his brother Tommy, who used to be a firefly. If anyone knows how to get Ellie to the fireflies, it's Tommy. Joel begrudgingly accepts this new burden as Tess buys them time to escape from pursuers. With Tess gone, Joel immediately sets a few ground rules for Ellie. One, don't tell each other stories. And two, Joel is in charge. He even makes Ellie say it so he knows she understands. Tommy lives in Wyoming, so Joel and Ellie start their cross-country quest as soon as possible. After getting some parts for Joel's associate, Bill, Bill, the two score a car and hit the road. They end up stuck in Pittsburgh, where they're jumped by a group of hunters, survivors who stopped caring about civility long ago. While trying to escape the city, Joel and Ellie pair up with two brothers, Henry and Sam. The four agree to help each other get out of Pittsburgh, but the brothers ditch them as soon as some hunters show up in an armed vehicle. Joel and Ellie continue to get chased across a bridge until they reach a broken section. They're trapped, so Ellie proposes that they jump into the water below. She doesn't know how to swim, but she leaps before Joel can say no, and he angrily jumps after her. Unfortunately, they slam into a rock, and Joel is knocked unconscious. Luckily, Sam and Henry return and save the two. When Joel wakes up, he threatens to shoot Henry, but Henry explains he abandoned them only to save his younger brother. Besides, Joel would have done the same. And Ellie reminds Joel that the brothers did just save them. So Joel lets Henry off the hook and the four camp in the radio tower for the night, bonding over Harleys and, well, the fear of turning. The next morning, Ellie goes to wake Sam, only to find out he's been bitten and turned overnight. Joel goes for his gun, but Henry stops him so he can shoot Sam himself. Henry then aims the gun at Joel, blaming him for Sam's fate. As Joel tries to talk Henry down, Henry shoots himself. Fall. 2033. Fall hits as Joel and Ellie finally make it to Jackson County, Wyoming, to meet Tommy. Joel speaks to him in private, telling him about Ellie's immunity and asking him to take her to the Fireflies. Tommy eventually agrees, but when Ellie finds out about the plan, she flees to a nearby ranch house, angry at Joel for planning to abandon her. Once Joel finds Ellie, he tries reassuring her by saying that she's safer with Tommy instead of him. She fights back, telling Joel that she isn't Sarah. Everyone she knows has either died or abandoned her, and she's upset that Joel's trying to do the same. As you'd expect, bringing up Sarah only makes things worse. So Joel decides that this is where they go their separate ways. But once he cools off, Joel offers to keep Ellie around, claiming he doesn't want to piss off Tommy's wife. Tommy highlights their next destination, the University of Eastern Colorado, where the Fireflies have a lab. Joel and Ellie start heading that way on their horse named Callus. And yes, you can pet the horse in The Last of Us. Once they get to the university, they find it largely abandoned, with no lab or Firefly in sight. They scour the ruins and find an audio recording that points them to where the Fireflies went next, St. Mary's Hospital in Salt Lake City. Just before they can start their long trek to Utah, some survivors roll in and start attacking them. One in particular gets close to Joel and causes him to fall off a ledge and straight onto a piece of rebar. Ellie helps Joel get up, but now he's struggling to even walk. They escape the university, fighting off some enemies along the way. The whole time, though, Joel continues to bleed out, and as they ride away on Callus, passes out and falls off the horse. And Ellie fights desperately to get him back in the saddle. Winter, 2033. By now, a cold winter has set in. Ellie has been taking care of Joel, and he seems to be on a slow but steady road to recovery. She scours the nearby ruins for medical supplies, finding the wreckage of a military helicopter in an abandoned mall. Inside, she comes across a med kit, but the whole experience takes her back to that one day with Riley so many months ago. After reminiscing, Ellie makes her way back to Joel and stitches him up. She wraps blankets around him and puts him on a platform tied to Callus, and she rides off into the harsh cold. Some time passes, and Ellie has taken up hunting with a bow and arrow, surviving off the land as she helps Joel recover. She takes down a buck, but before she can harvest its meat, two men approach her, David and James. David proposes a trade for the deer, but Ellie is fully on guard. She asks if they have any antibiotics, and James sets off to get some. While David and Ellie are alone, David tries to make small talk and 
befriend the young girl, but she's still suspicious. Turns out, her instincts were spot on. David reveals that he's part of the group of survivors that attacked her and Joel back at the University of Eastern Colorado. They nearly killed Joel, but in David's mind, Joel is the crazy man responsible for the deaths of his men. Ellie pulls the rifle on David, but James appears behind her, pistol in hand. David just orders James to give her the medicine and let her go. Ellie doesn't hesitate and immediately flees, despite David offering her shelter and protection. Ellie safely makes it back to the home where she and Joel have been taking shelter. She gives him the medicine and quickly falls asleep next to him. Unfortunately, David and his group of bandits track her down. When she hears them, she wakes up and takes off, making a ton of noise to draw them away from an extremely weakened Joel. While the group never ends up finding Joel, David eventually gets the drop on Ellie and knocks her out. When Ellie wakes up, she finds herself locked behind bars and sees James on the other side, chopping up a body. James fetches David, who brings Ellie some of the venison from the other day. He can tell she's scared and claims that he can protect her if she cooperates. Ellie plays along for a second, then breaks David's fingers as she reaches for his keys. David, furious, leaves the room, threatening to chop her into tiny pieces in the morning. Back at the house, Joel has recovered enough of his stamina to make his way outside. He realizes Ellie is missing, and he kills almost all of David's men that are nearby, all except two. Tortures these last two survivors, finds out where David took Ellie, and heads out to save her. Meanwhile, David and James get ready to put Ellie on the butcher's block. Just before they cut into her, she reveals the bite mark on her wrist. They have no idea that she's immune, so they get freaked out and figure that she's infected. Ellie then kills James with a butcher's knife and escapes the building as David chases after her. The two end up in a nearby restaurant, and in their scuffle, the building catches fire. Eventually, David gets the upper hand and pins Ellie to the ground. As she struggles, Ellie gets a hold of a machete and cuts David down, hitting him over and over. At this point, Joel finally catches up with her. They embrace, and he tells her everything will be fine. Spring 2034. It's April 2034, and the snow has finally melted away. Joel and Ellie spot the St. Mary's Hospital exit along the highway. As they make their way to the hospital, Ellie gets distracted by a herd of giraffes roaming through the city ruins. She and Joel pet one as it feasts on some vegetation, and they watch the herd, taking in the hauntingly beautiful landscape for a bit longer. Suddenly, Joel has the idea to simply not go to the Fireflies. Instead, he and Ellie could return to Tommy's settlement and live a peaceful life, you know, with the occasional bandit raid to break up the monotony. Ellie rejects the idea, and instead insists that the two of them have been through way too much to give up on their goal now. At least Joel gets some emotional closure along the way. When the two reach a camp of medical tents, Ellie offers her condolences about Sarah, and she gives Joel something she snagged from Tommy's place. It's a picture of Sarah and Joel, celebrating together after a soccer match. He doesn't get angry this time. Instead, he seems to come to terms with his trauma and accepts his past, he even shares some stories as they walk, breaking his own rule. Later, Joel and Ellie are heading through a flooded underground tunnel when one of the platforms collapses. Ellie gets thrown into some deep water and still hasn't learned to swim. Him. Joel rescues her, but he's worried he was too late. As he tries to wake her up, some fireflies show up and knock him out for failing to obey their orders. Joel wakes up under firefly jurisdiction, and he's face to face with Marlene. It's been a whole year since he's seen her. She assures him that Ellie is safe. More importantly though, Ellie's about to go under the knife, because the cordyceps inside her mutated, which is why she didn't turn. The surgeons plan to carefully remove the infection from her body so they can study it. Trouble is, the infection starts in the brain. Joel panics, knowing that the surgery will kill his baby girl, er, Ellie. He gets angry, telling Marlene to find someone else to be her lab rat. Marlene refuses. Even though she's watched over Ellie since she was a young kid, this has to be done for the sake of humanity. She orders her guard to escort Joel out of the facility. Joel massacres the guard. He escapes the room and runs through the facility until he gets to the operating room that Ellie is in. He finds three doctors standing around an unconscious Ellie. In a fit of rage, Joel kills the doctors and takes Ellie in his arms, making a break for the nearest exit. He carries her to the underground garage, but just before he can escape, Marlene stops him and holds him at gunpoint. She tries reasoning with him, telling him that without Ellie, America will never recover. Clickers are everywhere, and as their year-long journey has shown, very few humans can be trusted. It seems like Marlene's words start getting through to Joel, and she starts to cautiously approach him. But instead of handing Ellie over, Joel kills Marlene, loads Ellie into a car, and drives off. As Joel's driving on the highway, Ellie wakes up in the back seat. She's pretty confused. She asks Joel about what happened, and he tells her that the fireflies simply let her go. Somehow the organization caught wind of dozens of other immune humans, so they simply didn't need Ellie anymore. Now, you and I both know that's a lie. Nonetheless, the car keeps trekking on, back home to Tommy's settlement. Eventually, the two finally make it to Jackson County, but the car breaks down. Joel tries to fix it, but when he can't, he resolves to start walking the rest of the way and asks Ellie to follow him. As they hike along, Joel opens up a bit, telling her that he thinks Sarah and Ellie would have really liked each other. Finally, Ellie asks Joel to tell her the whole truth about what went down with the fireflies. She saw so much suffering because of the virus, and she knows she could be one of, or maybe the only, key to stopping it. Over the past year, she's had to say goodbye to Riley, watch Tess sacrifice
sacrifice herself after getting infected and witness Sam and Henry's tragic deaths. Ellie knows that she could have done something to make things better. She asks if Joel's story about the fireflies, discovering others with immunity, was true, and he swears that it is. She stops for a moment to think, then she looks up at him and simply says, okay. And that brings us to The Last of Us Part Two. The world that Naughty Dog and Neil Druckmann built is full of tough decisions. Well, here's an easy decision for you to make. Subscribing to the leaderboard. From indie to AAA, we love the games you play. I'm Sydney with the leaderboard, and I'm so excited for part two, guys. I just finished a playthrough of The Last of Us that I streamed on Twitch, and oh, it's such a good game. I hope you are all just as excited as I am. Be good, everybody. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.